Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Patri Derek Pan. I'm the founder of Kmyrican Inc., the leading news hub on the Cambodian diaspora. Tonight, we have a special guest, all the way live from Seattle, Washington, Amanda Peanut Nate. Welcome. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. And yourself? I'm good too. Just got off work, but that's okay. <laughs> nice, nice. I hope everyone that's watching us right now can hear us okay. We might experience some difficulties on my end, so we apologize. But um, tonight we look forward to uh, you know getting to learn a little bit more about our guests and her work and some of her experiences as a young uh, artist in the Seattle area. Uh, Amanda, for those that don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I go by the name of Peanut, and I got that name back in high school. And a lot of people are going to ask, like, how did you get the name Peanut? Well, I got it back in high school um, on my dance crew. My teacher gave me the name. Actually, it was an accident. I don't know. Um, I think she was making fun of me one day during practice, and then mm. the name just stuck forever and ever and ever. Um, but it became me, and I embraced it, and um, I dance, and I do um, a range from hip-hop to freestyling to contemporary and modern, and um, and I like mm -hmm. to fuse all of it together one way or another, whether it's I use my music or I use like a modern day mainstream music um, I, I tend to fuse things together so all the styles together um, as much as I can um, I do poetry I like to write um, I used to blog and oh. yeah and I do photography so I got my way through college by doing photography actually <laughs> I see I see where did you go to college I went in the to, Seattle area or yeah, out state? Where did you go? In Washington, up in northern Washington, um, by the Canadian border, um, Bellingham, Ooh. Western Washington University. It's a four year university. The Vikings, right? Yeah, Vikings. <laughs> right next to the Canadian border. Yeah, I, bet, I bet you guys <laughs> uh, went to Canada all the time, the, the Cambodian students. Uh -huh. Was there a Cambodian club up there? Yes, there was. Um, so there is a KHSA up there, and it started, it restarted again my freshman year, and I was an officer as a freshman. Wow. Yeah, so I kind of co founded that with a bunch of like, about five or six other people. Yeah. Great, great. Where, um, elaborate a little bit more about your dancing. Like, who did you remember uh, seeing? growing up uh, on TV or, or on YouTube and all that good stuff. Like, what were some of the early influences of, of your dance style now? Well, I, well, I'm pre-YouTube days. <laughs> so when I started dancing, there was no YouTube or any of that yet. Um, but I remember going to see, like, my cousin Veronica do like her bomb dancing but I never wanted I didn't want to try I was really shy I was super shy so I just watched them and my cousins and stuff they they danced and then um I didn't get into it until about middle school and I, I just love dancing at home and I, I danced following like my karaoke videos <laughs> that's how I started oh, wow. like I'm not even joking like I there was like this video of like um Akoi's Bukoi's kids dancing and yeah. like they they performed and it was in like a karaoke disc and I, I memorized every single dance that they did and I performed for like all my family members <laughs> and that's how I wow. started I didn't start like in school or anything and I didn't have like um, YouTube to watch all these amazing dancers before I just had karaoke disc that's that's what I had um, and then um, later on, learning that my mom was actually an Obama dancer, my dad was actually one too, um, got me interested. Like, I, I used to watch tapes of my mom, like, doing the fishing dance and stuff, and I saw um, pictures of her <laughs> and, like, outfits, like, Costco outfits and stuff, and it was really interesting because she was about my age when she started too. And so that's what led me into doing Obama as well. But when it came to, like, hip-hop and stuff, my friends took me to a church um, up the hill from my our school, 
and they had a, a team there called the Young Doves, and I started going there, and that kind of broke me out of my shell in actually like dancing with other people and not just in front of my TV and my family. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a uh, it's different for a lot of the the dancing. Um, for styles, very really styles. Like I didn't get into like modern or like actual training until high school. I got lucky because my so high yeah because my um my school had a dance program so I got very lucky. Um, you went to a uh, Seattle school, right? In Evergreen, yes, I, I, went I recall. To Evergreen High School, but I was in the Arts and Academics Academy. So the school was split up into three different schools, and I was part of the Arts Academy, and we had dance, and so I got very, very oh, lucky. Good. Yeah. And you kept that name Pina as your as your artist name yes. during those early stages of uh, your evolution as an artist. I see. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm sure like a lot of your friends were into it at that time. Mm -hmm. Seattle has such a strong dance yeah, history and culture yeah. um, to my knowledge. And I would think uh, a lot of your peers were, were, were also doing it. Did you, you said you had a clique or a group? Yeah, the first, no? group, the first crew that I danced with was the Young Doves. They were the Young Doves young and Doves. we did hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, they were hip hop based and more street dancing. Um, that was like middle school. I was in like seventh and eighth grade when I did that, so it was really, really just like basics. But then we we were we did performances and stuff around the community, and we were known as Young Dubs in the community, which was really nice. And then when I got into high school, um, it took a few years, but I started. Um, I finally got my dance teacher, to, you know, to help us start a dance crew there, and we weren't a team; we were a crew because we didn't compete. Mm -hmm. We um we perform. We are a performance based crew. So. I see. Did you have you ever um performed competitively as a group or as a solo artist? Um, I have not. I I haven't gone into any, any competitions, whether with a group or by myself, other than like competing with <laughs> against people from my own crew. Like I I haven't stepped out into like com competitions. I go to competitions and stuff, but I. Have not competed competitively, or yeah, I, I haven't really ever thought about it either. Like I have thought about it, but then it's kind of like, a, yeah, yeah. I think I think how Kamarikan first found about you was when you were an undergrad at Western, yeah, and you were sharing a lot of YouTube and mm -hmm. sort of rehearsal videos and mm -hmm. sort of videos that you performed um, with your peers there at Western, yeah. But I, I did try to trace and dig deeper uh, prior to this interview to see if you had any uh, videos where you were in a competition environment. I never, I noticed that you, you didn't, you haven't yeah, competed. Yeah, I, I don't. So that confirmed it. Yeah. Yeah. And I noticed that because you're, you're you have this multi-layer uh, background in various art forms. Mm -hmm. I noticed that during those early stages of your dancing, you've also um, uh, inter um, embed poetry into mm -hmm. your pieces can you share a little bit about the you know your 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 fusion of both poetry and dance in some of your pieces that you've pr produced in the past mm -hmm. yeah so i didn't get into like i always liked to write like growing up i had a lot of diaries like so many different diaries that my mom bought me um but it wasn't until college when i i started um kind of playing around with a little more so I'm not I don't speak a lot I don't talk a lot and I'm not a very vocal person but I, I love to think and I love to write everything that I'm thinking down and then um, I I always have a hard time expressing myself with words to people like when I'm when I'm talking to people I, I tend to get flustered and I I tend to have a hard time getting my words out and making it feel like you know sometimes I always feel like I'm saying something wrong or I, I'm, you know, it just, it's hard for me to, to communicate through words sometimes. Um, and then, so when I started writing, it, it made it easier for me to, to process things and write things out and, and have um, this, this like safe, the safe place for me. And that's when I started blogging um, oh. on Tumblr. And then um, when I started fusing dance with poetry, it was, it was, I don't know. I don't know how that came about. I think I just 
needed ways or like for myself to to create and express um, things that I couldn't necessarily say to people um, during a conversation, like during a normal conversation that we're having. Um, and so it was just, it's, it's, I took a, I took a class, a spoken word class in um, my undergrad years. And I have to thank the people in that class so much because they, they really helped me. And it was my first time doing spoken word and like sharing the pieces that I have, because a lot of the pieces that I, I write are very, are very personal. And I only write very personal things. And sometimes those, those really personal things that I write makes people really uncomfortable um, because it's so personal. And to have that space to open up and like really build my craft and like find fusions and find connections between my body and the words that are coming out of my mouth. Like it's, it's really helped me with my self-confidence and the way I carry myself and the way I present myself and the way I, I perform now because it's, it shapes like this, this performer that I didn't even know that existed inside of me. So it's, it's, it's been a journey and it's, I'm still building and I'm still learning and um, I'm working on continuing to, to learn and build from different people. We, the last performance that uh, I got uh, to see you, Amanda, was at Western mm -hmm. for an event uh, earlier um, yes. in April. We, we want to share that video later on Comaric and for those um, followers mm -hmm. and fans of yours. Uh, yeah. But can you give us a preview of what that piece, like the meaning behind the piece and what that piece, um, mm -hmm. what that piece is all about? You know? Yeah, the piece, the piece that I did for WWE, um, KJSA's, they did uh, memoirs of uh, Cambodia, from the Cambodian genocide. And I was honored enough to be invited to perform there for their event. And um, I used Laura Mann's song mm. um, in the hands of men and monsters. And they, that song, I, I use it a lot and I don't ever do the same choreography to it. Um, and I always freestyle to it um, because I, I just wanna be able to, to express whatever I'm feeling in that moment itself, um, how I'm feeling for that song in that moment. And for that um, specific event, I did a poem but it was pretty much a story about my um, my family and my experiences as a Cambodian American um, and how the genocide affected has affected me and my life. And I know a lot of people are like, how has the genocide affected you if you didn't go through it? Um, well, it has affected me because my family went through it and I um, I have to suffer the consequences of you know, go, them going through depression or PTSD and all these other things. And the way I was raised is due to the effects of the genocide. And where I am at in life right now is due to the effects of the Cambodian genocide. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. And uh, we will get that video uh, for our viewers later this evening. So check, check us out on Facebook.com for slash Twelve-minute video uh, uploaded on uh, on um, my site. My dad, ngupong some pepper. I'm so sorry. Um, the internet, I guess, is unstable here at the Pan family. Um, yeah, so, it's on so your hope, audio again. It is. Yeah, it might go off back yeah, and forth, but okay. the final product will show the video. So um, we we apologize for the six that are experiencing difficulties hearing or seeing us, mm -hmm. um, but I know upon completion of the video, uh, 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 proper video upload for, for those two on replay. Uh, one, of the, one of the cool things that I was uh, interested in interviewing you, Amanda, was, to, was this conversation that we had when we came back home from Western together um, for that event. Um, share, a, share with us, Amanda, your sort of experience yeah. Um, uh, touring and being a part of uh, one of you know a few of Cambodia's most leading uh, pop singers. Tell us a little bit about 
your time <laughs> and what you did with them and um uh, you know okay yeah so i've been to cambodia twice and both times i went alone and the first time i went um i got to stay with probably one of my best friends in the whole entire world now um but she's one of cambodia's lead singers um top female singers of today um miss of the peer and let me tell you she is crazy and <laughs> she's so cool and down to earth and like um but it was just it's it's a different type of lifestyle and um i mean she's she's amazing and the work that she's doing now is is amazing and um i i encourage people young people old people all people to check out her music um when i was with her she was yeah. working on a um an all original album and uh she released a few songs from it she released i think three or four songs from the album as singles um along with music videos and what's cool about it is the those tracks are made by Cambodian Americans really and so she teamed up really? with okay. yes so she teamed up with um Cambodian Americans from um the bay area and they and she and DJ Knup wrote all these amazing songs um and they're more like R&B and more modern so if you ever want to check them out hit hit me up and I'll let, I'll link you to them um and they're they're really really interesting songs because they're they're in Khmer but they're done by Cambodian Americans and um sung by you know Cambodia's top leading female pop stars you know and so it's just like a whole combination and a rapper mm. who was writing all her lyrics and stuff so it's just like this, this is all this original right? this, Amanda this is all original yeah all original all original no, everything about from her songs Korea or Thailand or from no, uh, no, no, friendly no okay <laughs> no 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 sampling all original um from the music to the lyrics to the melody it it everything is um original and to see her go through that process of like trying to change things like she's she was fed up with um copying mm. you know having copyrighted music and having people you know look down on her as a musician as an artist as a singer as a female singer who's you know really trying to push Cambodia onto the map and um she really just took the step that like a lot of people didn't want to take especially singers who are already a part of big productions like he was already part of town production who you know like really weren't sure about what she was doing and then afterwards they're like oh well it works so well let's write original music so i kind of see her as like this you know there's a there was a lot of um backlash at first because people weren't supporting her um at give first. us can you give us some dates some timelines uh for our listeners and watchers right now like when when did this involvement that you had with uh Mia Sophia uh, happened 2012 2012 okay cuz she was here in the US touring okay um, that's yeah 2012 2011 yeah um and then yeah, when she went back I went I also went back or when she went back to Cambodia I went after her like a couple months after her that's in 2012 correct mm -hmm. I see yeah. Can you explain or share with us your time touring with her? Give us some yeah. like juicy stuff, so, some really good juicy stuff. What did you see? <laughs> how was groupies over the, are treated? Groupies, how, was oh there, how was uh, fans react to <laughs> to you? To to just in general, like are you touring out in the countryside in the city? Give us some yeah. observations. So, I, I don't think any people have really so seen a concert in Cambodia. <laughs> I haven't. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I went back a second time um after I graduated from Western like okay. when summer was through I was like okay I can't like I don't I don't have a job yet I don't know what to do with my life I bought a ticket uh, so my summer camp that I was working at ended in August and I bought my ticket that week that it ended and then left to Cambodia the first week of September so like I had no planning time at all and so i went to cambodia and i ended up 
acting with another singer <laughs> um and i ended up uh going around and touring with her um because it was like it was concert season when i was there so um between 2012 and then my last trip like i got to see so many different provinces and let me tell you the places where you would least think that they would have a concert okay. like in the middle well, of the, in the, on the countryside of <laughs> yeah, in the countryside in the, the middle of nowhere. Wow. <laughs> like they have concerts and yeah. there's thousands of people there and yeah. they're live concerts and they're, they're free. are they free oh they're and they're free. free yeah okay yeah and they're free admission most of them are free admission like if unless it's like a sponsored like you know private event it's mm. it's free um, for the public and yeah there's people just everywhere and it's like there's vendors and there's a you know the big old stage with the monitors and the screens and the cameras and then people just all over the place and um there and of course the stars you know are in the back backstage you know and they'll have their fans like surrounding their cars and stuff so wow. they can't get out but it's it's so it's such like a a good feeling to see like people out there supporting these um artists because it's like without people support then we're performers to do you know and um it's just it's it was like nothing i ever expected to happen like i i went there just planning to go backpacking mm -hmm. through and by myself and then i'm just on a whole different journey like i did not expect any of that to happen can you, can you clarify what was your role when you were part of this tour like were you dancing were you backup singer <laughs> no. were you doing, like, oh you're the hype woman what were you doing like um <laughs> i, I was wave dancer. are you the wave creator what's that I was a dancer. You were a dancer. Um, okay. I was a dancer. So I, I did some shows with her. So they're live on Omnia and you can find them on YouTube. <laughs> Let's see. You better share those links. You want yeah, to share so, those links. Yeah. Did you do the choreography yourself? Did you like, hey, uh, friend, can I be responsible in producing the <laughs> choreography for this so, particular song? Because I've seen those videos, Amanda. You have to admit, some of them were really, really cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Did you get to but, have any input um, on that? I did get to, uh, got to have a, a little bit of input, uh, input on that because okay. she had released two new songs when I got there and they hadn't choreographed yet. And so when her two lead choreo um, choreographers were working on the, the dances, I actually was there for both of their sessions mm. and so i got to to help like tweak some things and do some things and choreograph some parts um and that was really exciting because i was just like oh whoa, i was not expecting that <laughs> i thought i was just here to stay and she asked me to dance so i was like oh okay nice nice yeah. let's take a little pause real quick amanda yeah. just to speak to our audience real quick um yeah. Mitt oh. Valentine over here. Yes. He's from Cambodia, so oh, I hi, he's, he's Mong Pia's fan. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool. Hi from Cambodia. Jim from uh, from Seattle. We're both in Seattle, actually. Yeah, this is like the first Seattle. time uh, we're actually doing a broadcast live. Um, I just wanted to say quick, quick uh, little uh, message to our watchers now. For those watching, please kindly reshare this link of the chat room. Uh, to mm -hmm. your social media networks. Um, also wanted to mention that um, we we try to be as engaging as possible with our audience. So mm -hmm. if at any time you have questions for Amanda, uh, please feel free to leave them in the box on the right corner of the screen uh, or type in forward slash and queue. And then the question will be queued for for the two of us to, to see together. Also, if you like every anything that we're saying or doing, there's a little hand sign signal that you can click on, and then you'll see the numbers go up. These are props, you know. Uh, a little bit later, uh, with your uh, with your permission, Amanda, we would like to maybe open up the room to see if there's anyone who wants to come in and say hi, have any questions, or uh, any of your friends that's watching. Um, Want to step in and and and, and uh, say something right now? It's it's currently locked, just two of us for the video feed. Mm -hmm. But uh, we definitely will welcome those uh, a little bit later in the broadcast. 
uh, to jump in. But yeah, at any time, feel free to ask questions to 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 Amanda. Then you know we'll queue it up. Mm -hmm. uh, back to the interview. Uh, so Amanda, uh, it's it's good to it's safe to say that you've been following Cambodian music and and uh, contemporary pop culture in, in in Cambodia for the past, mm -hmm. you know, maybe five to seven, eight years. You know, as a young artist yourself, right? It's safe mm -hmm. to say that you you've you've kind of understand what has developed and progressed in the in the last decade. Is that safe to say? Yes. Okay. That being said, how do you feel about the state of Khmer music today in Cambodia? You shared bits and pieces about mm -hmm. artists that you've worked with that are trying to pioneer and revive Cambodian music by being original with with lyrics and 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 and, and sound. Mm -hmm. Please elaborate in your observation. What have you seen that is encouraging about Khmer music? Okay, so within the past maybe three years, two years, I've seen a lot of growth actually um, moving forward with um, the next generation. So, uh, you know, before I'd be the only person listening to, you know, Khmer music. My iPod is filled with Khmer music. My phone is filled with Khmer music. All my playlists are Khmer. <laughs> so nobody could ever borrow really? my <laughs> nobody could ever borrow my iPod because they're like, oh, what is this? <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's Cambodian music. <laughs> um, and it used to be really hard because it was Cambodian music, but it was not Cambodian music. So like, oh, that's a Vietnamese song, or that's a Thai uh, song, or uh, that's a Britney song. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, and so now, um, after a, I, we've seen a lot of um, growth from the the next generation who you know are just underground artists with their guitars and their pianos and you know posting songs on youtube and soundcloud and stuff and they're really pushing artists who are actually in productions like oh. signed contracted artists to to really step up their game um because before people would be like, oh, you know, it's so much easier to just use a song that's already made and that's already done for you. All you got to do is change the language and you're done, you know. And that was that was actually really hard to to take in whenever I heard like watch interviews of like singers who actually made impacts, you know saying things like that and like believing that um, copyright was okay mm. and is okay to do because it's the it's the shortcut. It's the easy way to, to get things out there fast. And um, it's all about, you know, when you're living in Cambodia, everything is about on the go, like it's go, go, go all the time. And so in the industry, it's just as fast. It's like, it's double speed. Everything is like, you just have to get songs going all the time. Um, and so, but now people are actually taking their time to to make their own music and to give um, the writers are actually working on producing things for artists so that they they have their own songs. And I see that um, that it's progressing and it's moving forward. And whether the song is you know you know the best song in the world or not, as long as it's original, it's it's a good song. You know. Okay. I, so, I feel, yeah. So so you just said, if if I heard that correctly, mm -hmm. um, to sort of summarize, you feel that Cambodia, Cambodian music, um, it was all about quantity in mm -hmm. terms of producing uh, well, songs, like, yeah. producing songs based off our neighboring um, countries and mm -hmm. what was being generated in this in those respective countries mm -hmm. it was about quantity you now mentioned that you're starting to see a trend mm -hmm. with some of the more leading artists mm -hmm. that there is a focus now on originality mm -hmm. and not necessarily um quality because a lot of them are experimenting in this mm -hmm. new in this in this new process in producing music yeah it's, it's is that what you're sharing yeah it's all trial saying? and error right now like it, it really is trial and error because they're moving, they're shifting their ways and everything that they know and everything that they've done from, you know, just using what's already there. And they're mm -hmm. actually moving on from that and actually 
creating things from scratch and that's i think that's a really big step and it's really brave that they're doing that because they're it's it's you know it does take time to make an original song versus creating something that's already been created um and i see a lot of leading artists is really really stepping it up and trying to do the best they can to have their own voices heard in their own music and their own songs um and their own albums you know i don't know if people look or have seen Cambodian albums or anything like that but it's really rare to see an artist release their own solo album um, is that because you think it's is it profitability is yeah is so do you have any insight on that i'm just very curious mm -hmm. do, so how much an artist would make how do they even make money besides um, they don't make money, uh, if they don't even have tours like some mm -hmm. of them are established artists like the ones that you worked with how do to your knowledge like what how does this how does an artist survive in cambodia um, it's tough already in the u.s as mm -hmm. artists many for many young yeah uh, artists but what's your what's your thoughts on that i will tell you now that they don't make any money off of their albums off of the karaoke they don't okay like, they don't does, it, they don't because a like youtube is out there so everyone just upload up you know they buy one disc and they upload it for everyone and everyone just downloads it you know uh -huh. um and and it's not like over here like even if you download like a beyonce song or something like what's it gonna do to her you know she's multi-millionaire you know and so but the artists is in cambodia they don't get the money that's that's you know being sold their music their their songs are all out there on albums but right. they don't get money for it they get money per song maybe during the record um recording session but like other than that they don't they don't really profit off of their their own music and their own their own songs and their own albums and it's really rare that anyone even releases a solo album like um that's like, true no solo albums yeah it's just it's a compilation everything is a compilation everything is, everything is a mixtape yeah, <laughs> everything mix tape. um so it's it's really interesting because you know you you want an album with your favorite singer, but there's like ten other singers on there, and they only have yeah. like one song each yeah. on there. And it's more about like having everyone on one disc and having one person with ten songs. You know? Right. And, and for so, our watchers, and for our watchers who might be not who might not be familiar with Cambodia Cambodian mm -hmm. laws, um, I just want to note that you know intellectual property rights intellectual property is very lax in the country so if you're mm -hmm. an artist that produce original art as a music as a music artist or a painter or even um a, a film maker the the reality is you won't you're not being protected i think mm -hmm. there are efforts by the cambodian government that we should acknowledge that are underway that is trying their best to, to do that i know they're doing a, they're trying to do that with uh uh, looks and sees mm -hmm. Cambodia is one of Cambodia's greatest singers with his his music. I think, but I this think is that fairly went new. through. I think that actually yes. went through, and his his family is finally getting profits and everything. Getting the royalties of all the overseas Cambodians mm -hmm. using the song and remaking it and putting yeah. it into documentaries and whatnot. You know, that's mm -hmm. encouraging that the government has um, has 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 you know put uh, emphasis in trying to protect. The creative rights of artists who's producing these music and, mm -hmm. and these art pieces yeah but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um yeah, who's so produced who's producing share us drop some names drop some <laughs> production like we for those who's like might be curious to like you mm -hmm. know explore cambodian music who do you like and uh who's producing it uh what mm -hmm. production companies doing it mm -hmm. um so I'm a little biased, <laughs> just a little bit. A little bit, okay. Just a little bit, a little biased. Um, but I do support Miss Sophia. Um, she's my number one always. Um, probably just because she's like one of my best friends too. So uh, we're not related. Are you guys? Are you guys related? Um, I call her Matt. <laughs> okay. Um, Matt means mom in Khmer for those who watch. Yes, I call her Matt. Um, uh, and she calls me Konse, which Oh, and my mom just entered, so <laughs> that's my mom. I didn't mean. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, and then Aksukun Ginye is the other one. How do you um, spell that? I'm typing it out okay. for our watchers. 
please share and type because I have. Yeah, I can do that. I did my best for Miss Salpia. Who do they represent? What production companies are they affiliated with? Um, so Miss Oxapia is in Town production. Um, okay. So she's been with Town, and then she's on and off, um, depending on what what song she's recording. And then she also is with Cam Tracks Music, which is just purely all original Cam music. Um, okay. Here. So she's with Town Production. And they've been stepping up their game um, with original music for all of their artists, too. OK. And, um, Do you have any male artists that you like, hey, this is, he's the, he's the, he's the man. He's dropping good <laughs> stuff that I don't mind dancing to or like jamming on a Friday night? Um, I noticed you only drop female names. I know you're a little bit biased, but like, I am any, a any, any, any and male. And I'm about female empowerment. <laughs> so I, yeah, I'm a little biased. Um, also, Kenya is with Hongmya. Um, that's oh, yeah. Hongmya. And then for male singers, I well, hmm, one more female singer. Um, okay, one more female. One more, yeah. Wipe her out. Um, Big Sophia. Big Sophia is also with that's my Hongmya. Um, with also Kenya, and I I appreciate her because she just does not give a hoot about anybody and their comments and it's just it's so great like how how like empowering she is because with her she's the one like creating music and like producing music and like producing music and songs that are original for herself yeah. and for like other people in town production like the new songs that group sabat has come out with um sophia has worked on like the lyrics and the melody and stuff for him. So it's, it's kind of cool to see her like that. Um, she's she's pretty cool. Um, you did promise that you drop at least one male thinking. artist. <laughs> You're still thinking. Um, Ouch. I guess we, uh, I guess both males in Cambodia need to step up our game with producing well, original I, content I that she likes. I am a little biased too because yeah. I, I, I am a big fan of Groups of that. I, okay. I love him. And, um, I really, really, I, I guess he's new. Um, he was actually a contestant on The Voice Cambodia. Um, he was a contestant? Yeah. Oh, oh, he, oh, the person that you're referring to. Yeah, and okay. he's um, he's in Wii Production, and then that Wii Production is a stem off of um, That's My Hong Mia. So okay. it's like the contestants that were on um, The Voice Cambodia oh. and um, Cambodian Idol and stuff all go into that production um and his name is Vongdara Atana and he's like more rock, more rock? He, okay. yeah he's more rock and I, I I love him like I love his voice I do um yeah that that's one you have to create us a playlist Amanda yeah. Amanda's top 10 playlist we'll share that <laughs> on our YouTube channel yeah, yeah. Because uh, I, I would think everybody wants to hear something new these days. You know, we're sick and tired of Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the only thing I always hear, you know. Yeah, I don't listen I to the my... radio, so I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know half the songs that are out in mainstream. So, mm -hmm. yeah. For those that are stepping in, we're at 11 now, people. If uh, 11 people are in the room. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them for us. I'm going to leave the, the room open right now. So if you do step in, mm -hmm. uh, please be mindful and considerate uh, uh, with your time. Make the comment or questions short and sweet. But uh, you know we'll continue in the conversation. I think we're at the the 40, 35th minute mark of the interview. Uh, how do you feel right now, Amanda, with the interview? I feel good. I feel like it's a good the reception, place. The reception yeah. is good. Uh, we're mm -hmm. not having any difficulty on your end no. with the no. with the sound and audio with the sound and video. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, let's transition a little bit back to uh, to um, mm -hmm. to your dancing. You know, um, well, actually, I, I'm I'm before I transition back into the, um, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see yourself producing any music? Me producing like for music. writing, at least writing <laughs> lyrics. You have this writing background as a poet, <laughs> what artist? Maybe. And, maybe and you you toured and been involved with a lot of these leading mm -hmm. artists for the for over a decade, I would think. Um, any ambitions to be a ghostwriter? To you know, to to, to <laughs> you know, be the next. 
I don't know. Maybe someday. Have you explored I, that channel yet? Um, I. Have you secretly wrote and say, "Here, Kun uh, Kanya, uh, can you please uh, consider <laughs> reading it and <laughs> rehearsing it?" No, no, I haven't. Do you write Khmer? Do you write Khmer lyrics? That would be I, cool. I do. Ah. I haven't shared any of it though. Okay. Yeah. But I do write in Khmer sometimes because English was not my first language. I don't think. Mm -hmm. I learned multiple languages at once, so. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe someday. Someday. Speaking of someday, yeah. speaking of someday, do you someday foresee yourself back to Cambodia? Yes, so within the next two, two years. Weeks? Oh, two. <laughs> next two weeks. Maybe well, I, since y'all are you, leaving you thought, me. <laughs> I thought you said two weeks ago you might be coming to Cambodia yeah. in April. Okay. Yeah. So within well, yeah. the next two years, okay. Yeah, I wanted to go at the end of this year, but I think it's more practical for me to go at the beginning of next year. So we'll see. I see. So what do you currently do now in Seattle besides maintaining your love for arts? Uh, can you share <laughs> us a bit about what you've done post graduation and you yeah. know what you yourself uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Any projects you want to share with us, you know, as well? Um, so ever since I left or I graduated from Western, I've kind of been flying solo. Like I'm so used to having a group with me. Like when I was at Western, I had WUHA, which is um, the Western Washington University Hip Hop Association. And I had KHSA. Um, okay. And I always had people surrounding me and I always had people to like collaborate with. And like, I was always a part of a group and I was always doing, you know, team building stuff and like everything was always with a group. And it was, I never really got to explore myself as a solo artist when I was in my undergraduate years. And after that, like recently, I just, I kind of just, you know, I session by myself, I practice by myself and I'm kind of just exploring and like without having people watch me and like, because I, I get really self-conscious. And so now that I I have like a room to myself to practice and it's it's more just about exploring myself without being judgmental or thinking that people are being judgmental and trying to stop myself from being judgmental, you know on myself and so hard on myself because I am really hard on myself sometimes and I, I think I, I'm just starting to to really to really take things in different directions not necessarily one direction um, and um, I I think I also got a lot of that help from Andrew Andrew ma'am um, where he used to you know I used to send him my my videos and he used to tell me you know you know just stop stop you know trying to create images and just just feel the music and just feel you you know what your body wants to do and just let let it go and i've just been really trying to embrace that as a dancer and really just letting it go and letting it um you know just letting myself be me in that moment so i don't choreograph as much and i never really was a choreographer i i really i learned choreography and i performed choreography but as a choreographer like i would not take a t that title like i wouldn't call myself a choreographer because okay. i i do focus a lot more on on freestyling and freestyle movement and um creative movement um and so yeah it's people are like oh can you choreograph this and that i'm like no i actually I can't because <laughs> <laughs> i i it's hard for me to choreograph and if i choreograph i have to have like somebody there all the time to tell me what i just did <laughs> so um but i i am focusing more on just like being more comfortable with you know the things that i do in my body and being more self-aware and more aware of the things that i i have in um to give to myself as a dancer and as a performer um so that's with that um i I work as a child care counselor, so I work with kids every day, so I'm always tired every day. Um, because she literally me. came on 10 minutes before, after she got off the shift. Yeah, right? I got off. And her day. hair looks fabulous, even though she just literally got 10 minutes to prep for this, you know. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so that was awesome. Uh, speaking of uh, giving back as a dancer, have you taught? Have you thought about doing that with the kids that you work with now? Or like... 
Yeah, teaching dance. I've been asked to by the community center a few times, okay. but it hasn't worked out because of um, hours and like logistic stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I've been asked to to start a program there, but it's been hard because I don't have the time to do it. <laughs> um, and I've been asked to go to a couple other. I actually got an offer this past week. Or oh, to, to teach at to a teach. studio. Okay. So, but I'm just like, it's a little, it's a little hard because I, I don't choreograph and I do, I can for probably for for kids, but like, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. probably that's probably something you could explore, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Two years from now, when you're in Cambodia, is that something that you you <laughs> thought about doing? You said you um, you can see yourself in Cambodia in two years. Like, what yeah. what kind of what kind of stuff would you be doing? I actually wanted to go teach, not dance, but um, okay. the first time I went, I went uh, to teach English in Takao, um, okay. which okay. is where my, my dad's family is from. And the school that I taught at, um, Watson Up High School, or I taught English there. And um, it's a school that my grandparents built. So I kind of sort of see me going back there because I, I love that school. And it's it's heartbreaking sometimes to think about what my students used to tell me like you know like they live literally an hour and a half two hours max from the city but they've never seen the city type of thing and it's just you know it's a little tough out there and i, I do want to go back there i see yeah it's i'm i'm there in two weeks so i'm pretty excited to go back and i've been seeing a lot of uh artists from the diaspora going back and contributing mm -hmm. back um, and be playing a part of the, the, the revival of Cambodian arts in the country. So that's very refreshing mm -hmm. uh, to see that movement happening. You know, we know a lot of our friends are going back and forth. Some of them like Laura, yeah. ma'am has been there for years mm -hmm. now and we know others have been there longer. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, She's one of my it's, favorites. It's, great, it's, it's a great I, movement. Yeah, I might be so a little that? biased towards Laura too. She's, I, I love her so much, like I do. And I use a lot of her music in a lot of my performances, a lot. <laughs> I'm surprised you. we haven't seen you in, in any of her videos yet. That's the keyword yet, right? <laughs> yes. Because I know you're a big fan of hers yeah even even the two the two artists that you uh dropped names earlier mm -hmm. are you in their videos i left before we could uh, film them but i am in the concert video the concert series. okay you gotta share us the link to american so we can <laughs> you know embarrass you for a good <laughs> two minutes <laughs> but i'm yeah. sure you're 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 a solid dancer so there's no embarrassment there maybe if you we put you if the video shows you next to a, a Cambodian local, you know, with all due respect, I'm not sure how his coordination is, or her coordination is, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. See. Any any upcoming projects that we should be aware of that you're um, doing, either in your music or your poetry, travels, collaborations, collaborations. ideas, I, I anything that you just wanted to, you want, you what's know, that? I, I really want to collaborate with people. Okay. Um, Who is your top? three collaborates right now either in dance music film anything that you could and give us a why and give you a why yeah okay three well, artists that you want to collaborate well, Kamai or non Kamai, nice. imaginary or a dream artist like you can be beyonce and then you can just give us a reason why you know, give us three <laughs> artists okay um let's see so laura is my first one actually laura, laura man okay laura man. Yes, number one. why and in what in what and what collaboration would it be um so her music and my dancing so i really okay. want um i really i i had the chance to perform with her once okay um back at c um c mf, MF yes the first one um, gotcha. she invited us on stage to dance with her so that was the first time that i got to collaborate with her um but i really want to dance with her because I mean I I'm always dancing to her music and I feel like because she's you know she's Cambodian American female and she kind of understands the struggle and she's she's gone through so much and I've been following her since her since her smoke weeds <laughs> on YouTube you know and like it's just so amazing seeing where she's at now compared to then and I I just really want to work with strong female artists like her um 
and so she's she's number one. Okay, so Laura, um, ma'am, and a dance piece for a future video. Laura, we'll we'll see this this broadcast, so don't worry. Second artist. <laughs> Uh, why and what platform? Why and what platform? I don't even know. Let's see. Yes, yeah, this is this is a live interview. I never thought I would have this question in my notes, but it just came out of nowhere, you know? <laughs> yeah. The beauty of live interview. Let's ask see. questions those for those watching. Ask questions. There's 13 people here watching. I know you're eager. Mm -hmm. I see my mom and my dad out there. That's kind of funny. <laughs> Um, they can come in and say hi. Let's see. <laughs> They're probably in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> um, they probably are, actually. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> the other dancers that I want to work with are Hun Bain, um, Hun Bain. Oh, I know who Hun, Hun Bain is. And uh, Belle. Belle. Oh, I know yeah. Belle too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Those three. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, what's the third one? Hun Bain. Belle and who's the other artist? Um, her name is Noam Narim. 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 Okay, I don't know her. She's she's um also just an amazing Cambodian dancer. So she they all do um Cambodian classical ballet. Yes. And they all also do a contemporary modern yes. fusion twist on it. Yes. And that is everything that I, I've always wanted to do. And mm. they have created some of the most beautiful, heartbreaking and heart wrenching mm. and very empowering pieces. And I I really love what they do. Um, because that's everything that I want to do as a dancer is be able to to fuse everything that I know and, and just to be able to just, to just release and, and touch people in the way that they do, because they are very powerful women with very powerful pieces and a very, very, very just like solid foundation that I want to be able to achieve and have someday. Um, and so if I were to ever be able to even just like meet them, I'd be like, Oh, oh you haven't met them yet. Yeah. No, I haven't. I've talked uh, to them. Um, yes. I've talked to all of them, actually, all three of them, um, during separate occasions via like online. But I haven't actually met any of them. And but I would really love to dance with them someday. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've uh, to share a little bit. I've I've mm -hmm. known those two ladies, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Bain and Belle, for quite some time uh, mm -hmm. when I was living in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. And I do agree a hundred percent, Amanda, that some of the some of the stuff that they produce um, that I've seen is yeah. is very breathtaking. It's yeah. very breathtaking. I can't explain it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not biased, but I'm just saying. Like <laughs> I remember seeing some of the stuff yeah. that uh, they performed. It was just mind blowing. And uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's they're very strong, powerful women, and and they've they've definitely been pioneering in. Uh, Using those types of contemporary and mm -hmm. and classical Cambodian into their into their uh, pieces. Yeah. Uh, third person, make it a fun one. Not saying those two aren't fun, but like someone like maybe mm -hmm. a mainstream artist or like outside of the Cambodian community. Is there anyone? If there is, mm -hmm. then that's perfectly fine. Hmm. Funny you said that the Laura Mav spoke weed song. First time I actually discovered her too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all just saw her uh, smoke weed video. I've I seen that. I remember seeing that. Yeah, that that was when I started listening to her. Right. <laughs> Let's see. Um yeah, if you have questions, B T E films Dan, please jump in. Uh the seat is open. There's two seats open right now for those who want to be on video and audio with us while Amanda thinks of her third person. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really thinking about this. <laughs> Actually, no, I, I know. Okay. Um, I really, I love, I love Jesse J. Like, I Jessie really, Jesse J, she's a pop star, singer. Okay. Um, and she's just crazy. Like, I freaking love her. Um, her music speaks. And it really does speak, and it's impacted a lot. She was just in Cambodia, actually, at the end of the year. Um, she did a concert there. Oh, her, there. okay. I'm yeah. not, I know you're talking about that. Okay. Yeah, and She's the one that wore the, Al the Absar outfit, right? No, she didn't wear an Absar outfit. No. There was another non-Cambodian artist that came 
from either Europe or from US. I thought it was Jesse. Okay, I got the person wrong. Yeah, I think that Sorry. person was a DJ. Um, mm. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but um, yeah, she, her music speaks to me and it's it's gotten me through a lot of my issues, like, you know, personal issues and just um, relationship issues and stuff like that. And so I would actually just love to work with her someday. Um, uh, what platform? Her. Music, dancing again? More dancing. Dancing? <laughs> more dancing I see. yeah yeah she's she's i i follow her on snapchat and she's hilarious so <laughs> we, we could be friends we could be really good friends <laughs> if she's listening there it is <laughs> we'll relay it to her as well if you have her uh, if you have her information we're like we'll just force the, uh, <laughs> the link to her and say hey watch this interview she's one of your fans yeah, yeah. i really oh. wish i was in cambodia when she was there like I'm going to go to Cambodia right after I leave. Like, we're supposed to be best friends. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. The, I, the the three people, the three types of people you'd identify, I noticed that they're all, um, the collaboration is all uh, related to dancing, mm -hmm. which I find kind of a bit shocking. I, I was, I was, uh, I was, I thought you might drop like a, another, like, uh, spoken word artist or, um. or, um, Someone in a different uh, field. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. That's I would cool. actually want to collab with Andrew, actually. Okay. <laughs> the man sibling. <laughs> the man. Uh, you drop a guy's name for once. <laughs> I, oh, you did for you did for the the the, the singer. But as well. with Andrew, with both probably yeah. spoken word and dance. So that's true. That's true. For those who's curious about who Andrew is. Mm -hmm. We did an interview of him like two, uh, maybe a week and a half ago. So sift through our Blab uh, archives, shameless mm -hmm. plug, and you'll see the full interview of Andrew and I. Um, we're wrapping up, uh, Amanda. We're at the, I think we're at the one hour mark, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, before we let you go, uh, you see if there's any questions. I'm, I'm going to sift through it real quick. Um, oh, that's a great question. What is Clark? Amanda, feel free. What do you think Kmyrican is? You've been our, one of our biggest supporter uh, that I know as the founder of the company. What is Kmyrican to you? To Kmyrican someone who uh, is, is, is new to, to, yeah, is new to, to, uh, to us as a company. How would you describe us? It's, it's a platform for Cambodian Americans um, and not just Cambodian Americans. It's sort of like a way to um, for, like, I, I think what Derek is really good at is is actually finding gems and finding stories that most people won't hear about or know about or be able to see. And Khmerican provides that sort of platform for people to, to be seen and for stories to be heard um, across Khmer America. Um, so it's it's a great great platform and um, outreach and social media for for people to to discover things about Cambodia and Cambodian people and Cambodian culture and um, Cambodian history and and to to have a space and a community to come to and discuss things and to learn about things and to learn about people in our within our communities that we don't always hear about or see on the news or um, they cover a lot of a lot of great news that I, you know, as a Khmer American living in Seattle, wouldn't know about. You know, something happening in you know Boston in the Khmer American community there. Um, Khmer uh, Khmer American provides a really good platform for people to connect and to do outreach, and it's it's been great. And I've I have been following since my undergrad year, and it's it's been a really good um, community for me to come and meet people. I've met a lot of great people through, you know, just commenting on um, American feeds. So it's great. Thank you for that endorsement, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Tell us and the viewers watching, mm -hmm. how can they follow your progress? Where can they stalk you at? <laughs> I have Facebook, Facebook Instagram, Instagram, Snapchat, Chat. Twitter. Um, All under the same alias. Drop Tumblr. us. Drop us Tumblr. 
people still use Tumblr these days? I thought that was extinct. I, I go on it every now and then, and okay. people are still kind of there. Kind of there? Okay. Um, Under what alias? Under what moniker? Um, oh, it's all universal? One, one name for all platforms? Yeah. Kind of guy like me? Everything is my full name? Yeah. Or... Well, not really. My. Can name... you drop two of them at least? Because this becomes uh, permanent. Uh, the the content yeah. being shared on the message that becomes permanent for those who, who come back and watch it on replay. So can you type at least one or two that you yeah. want to feel comfortable sharing to our watchers? Instagram. I think my Instagram, my Snapchat are the same. And then the name that's already on here is my Twitter name. So King Peanut okay. is my Twitter name. Um, okay. But I'm not really on it very often. So, but I am on Instagram and Snapchat. I see. I'm going to answer uh, M. Baya real quick before we part ways. Uh, she, he or she asks, is it entertainment focused U.S. news? Um, it's not necessarily, it's not focused on entertainment as a whole, uh, we cover all areas of um, in news from arts, politics, student, food, the whole gamut of, of categories. Um, we do try to focus uh, much of our content here in the US with different um, populations of the Cambodian community. Uh, here in the US, uh, we have about, about 10 to 15% of our content outside of the US uh, yes, uh, my colleagues and I run the company. I'm the founder of Comerican, uh, Mike Moon. Um, well, if we don't have any other questions, we're at the one hour mark. Both of us are in the West Coast Pacific time zone, Amanda. I think mm -hmm. we're probably getting hungry. Uh, my folks are cooking some food I can smell here because I'm in the kitchen area, <laughs> not too far from the kitchen table. Uh, any last words? Any last, um, yeah, any last words you want to say to your yeah, watchers, followers? It says, yeah. wait, wait. If you could have any additional talents, what would they be? Thank you, Angie. Um, I wish I could sing. I, I do wish, but I can't sing. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, my dad sings. He, he thinks he can sing. I think my dad can sing. I can't sing for the life of me. <laughs> um, but I do wish I could sing. Um, and talents. I wish I could play the guitar. Guitar. I knew it. Yeah. Or the throw. I really want to learn how to play the throw. What's the throw? The, the keyboarding one. clarinet? Or whatever. The two the string one? Yeah. Violin? Yeah. I really wish I could play the throw. Really. Cool. Yeah. Any last words, Amanda? Thank um, you, uh, Angie, for that question. Yeah. She comes out of nowhere. I know that <laughs> Angie's my my roommate slash best friend slash everything <laughs> little sister that I never had, but now I do have a sister. But you know, yeah. <laughs> Any last words? Um. Traditional Before, dance? Wait, oh, what? Traditional dance. Do I do traditional dance? I guess that's the question. Oh, yeah, I do traditional dancing. Um, I did traditional dancing. I haven't done traditional dancing since I graduated. So I did teach Obama when I was at Western. Uh, yes. For those coming in late, uh, the whole broadcast, the whole one-hour broadcast will be available for viewing uh, immediately after the conclusion of this uh, this interview. It will be uploaded on YouTube as well. And additionally, uh, for those who want to see some of her previous work, we're going to share it on Comerican's Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Comerican, uh, facebook.com forward slash Comerican in one word later this evening. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Hmm? Yeah, if you do want to find my Facebook, I'm tagged in the post on Comerican, So Yes, yes. So check us out. Uh, if you're in you, Seattle, if, if you're not in Seattle, <laughs> it doesn't matter where you are. If you want to collaborate, 
please let me know. I would love to collaborate with other artists out there. It doesn't matter what platform, as long as you don't make me sing, I will be happy. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's an open invitation. You. That's an open invitation for everyone who's watching now and those who are going to be watching on replay. Open invitation to collaborate, minus the singing. <laughs> minus the singing. <laughs> great, can, great. I can do really great lip syncing. But... There you go. There you go. Well, Amanda, it's been a pleasure talking with you tonight. Thank you yes, for thank you. Uh, spending time with us this evening. Uh, we're literally neighbors across the street, I think, right? No, we live in, <laughs> we live in the same city. <laughs> Not really, but in the same county. Yeah. But, uh, you know, continue doing what you do. Thank you. Love your work. Uh, we support your work 110%. Um, thank you. And continue being the, the person that you are. You thank know? you. Thank you for having me. This was, this was a really, really great fun fun experience and i really do hope that artists is to reach out or you know i i really do want to work with other people and i really hope to discover more cambodian americans out here in seattle too that i haven't met yet sounds great well thank you let's all do a collective wave uh and say bye to our watchers uh and um, we hope you enjoy this broadcast we have the lovely and super talented artist on Friday, Chrysanthi Tan, based in LA, joining us. So hopefully uh, our viewers continue to support us and watch us um, at that time. Have a good night, Khmer America. Good night, Amanda. Good night, everyone that's watching us. And we thank you for your time. Bye. Bye.